días. Feliz sábado. Uh, a ver, es febrero 6. El día 6 de febrero. Hoy le doy los buenos días. Este, voy a hacer mi cuento de febrero. A continuar con honrando a Martin Luther King. Black History Month, la historia del afroamericano. Pero igual como cualquier cultura, como la cultura de los latinos, los asiáticos, hay que recordar que no nomás nos celebramos una vez al mes, pero uh, todos los días del año. Pero como este año se dedica a reconocer las contribuciones y la historia de los afroamericanos y todo el trabajo que hizo Martin Luther King, pues uh, lo voy a honrar con el cuento, uno de mis favoritos, uh, El Muñeco de Nieve. So today, in honor of Martin Luther King, I'm going to read The Black Snowman to uh, uh, celebrate Martin Luther King and Black History Month. Even though we should celebrate every culture, um, African American culture, not just in February, and not uh, and the uh, Asian culture, not just in uh, the Ch during the Chinese New Year, or the Latinos during Cinco de Mayo, or the 16th of September, their Independence Day, but we should celebrate all cultures every single day of the year. But because it is designated as um, African American uh, Heritage Month or celebrating Black History Month, I am going to honor um, the the black history, um, uh, the black history and the people of African descent by telling you one of my favorite stories, the black snowman. Uh, también tengo los uh, muñecos de nieve por la noche. This is uh, the snowman at night. It is a really fun children's book that I can read afterwards about these uh, snowmen and what they do uh, when we fall asleep. It's a really fun kid story too. So I will do that. I'm gonna start first with uh, English and then I will continue with the Spanish and then I'll alternate the next time. All right, so um, The Black Snowman. Okay, this story is by Phil Mendes, illustrated by Carol uh, Bird. All right, so um, this is the illustration. As you can see, I think I've got too much light from the, my window. I'm gonna go close it so that we don't get such a bad reflection. Okay, let me see if there's not as much reflection on the. This is a beautiful illustration, uh, the first illustration of this book. Let me see if I can turn on this light and it won't have the, the same effect. Okay, so somewhere in the lonely grass hut in Western Africa, an aged storyteller prepares for the arrival of the village children. He's, he tells stories of Anansi the spider. Stories of Anansi's head came to be so small and how jealousy came to the Ashanti tribe. I don't know if you read some of the Anansi spider stories. They are so fun and uh, it teaches a lot of the of uh i don't know uh tales of the of the other african people the story storyteller is ready except for one important thing a brightly colored kente as he wraps the cloth around him his mind transforms into what that of a young native as an old man he has forgotten the many stories, but when he wears the magic kente, 
The stories are quick and sharp in his mind. The Kente restores his memory. The storytelling ritual continues for many years. Village children grow up, have their own children, and send them to hear and to learn. But one day, the storytelling comes to an end. So you see this Kente right here, this wrap. It is uh, a special cloth that is worn with bright colors. Um, and each color represents something important to the African people. And I, I relate this to my Latino culture uh, with the shawls or the um, mañanitas. I have this hand-woven, um, this is not a shawl, it is like a wraparound. I'm not sure the exact name, but I got this from the indigenous people of Puebla uh, in, in the mountains in, in the uh, the magical city town of Quetzalan with my friend. So the director of the schools gave me this many years ago. So when people would wrap this around, they feel that presence of the culture, just like this uh, storyteller, this, uh, this storyteller uh, regains his memory because it has magical powers. But then like it says, the storytelling came to an abrupt end. If you know the history of the African Americans um, and how they ended up in, in America from, from, um, from Africa, you will know that ships came to their continent. And look at the illustrations. They are, they are, um, shackled and taken as prisoners. But you see right here there is a, a kente with this slave. And you can, it foreshadows or tells you ahead of time that this magical kente is going where? To America. So do you see the ship in the, in the background of the people that came to, uh, to take them as slaves. So invaders captured the villagers and seized their property. The prisoners are loaded, loaded onto ships that cross a vast ocean, a huge, huge ocean for, for the continent called America, where the African people are all sold into slavery. The magic kente is sold too. It passes through generations, even after slavery is no more. A thousand uses fray its delicate threads until it is discarded as a useless rag, but it still possesses the magic. It still has wonders to perform. So see, you can see that um, this kente this kente goes and is there from generation to for years and years and years until it comes to modern day here to this this time and when one of the children in is going to impact one of the children here in America so this is Jacob Jacob Miller always woke up late on Saturday mornings but not today when his eyes open, his heart is beating rapidly. He did not remember his dream, but it must have been a bad one. He left frightened. He felt angry. Jacob reached out to turn on the light. On the base of the lamp, a cowboy swung a lasso that formed a trimming for, for the bottom of the shade. The cowboy's left hand was chipped, the lasso torn. The boy who owned the lamp for the very first time would be an old man by now. Jacob would have chosen a lamp with robots or space warriors, but like everything else he owned, the lamp was old and well used. It made Jacob furious just to think of, think of, look at it. So here's Jacob. He got this old lamp probably from, well, from an old store like the Salvation Army 
like the art store that we have in the back here of my of my house. And he was mad because he had to use old things. Here he wakes and goes to the kitchen. And these are the other three characters. Jacob uh, dressed quickly and followed the delicious breakfast smells coming from the kitchen. His younger brother, Pee Wee, was standing beside their mother at the stove. Can we go Christmas shopping today, Pee Wee asked. Well, not today, Mama said. Not today or any day, Jacob interrupted. Poor folk like us can't afford Christmas. Now, Jacob, Mama spoke trying to soothe over the hurt she saw rushing into Pee-wee's eyes. Maybe we won't go shopping together, but I have, but I know there's going to be presents. Sure, Jacob said, maybe we'll get some old socks from the well-known clothes store, the Salvation Army. Jacob's bitter words mocked his mom. Hurt, she yelled back at him. Don't you ever talk like that in this house, ever. Do you hear me, Jacob? Please don't fight, Pee-wee cried. Mama, Jacob, sorry. So uh, Jacob is bitter. He's angry because Christmas is coming and they cannot afford new toys. They have to go to the used store uh, to get their Christmas. But you know what? Jacob was not sorry. For this scene was repeated at least once a week. So he had this bitterness all his life. The words were not always the same, but the hurt was the same. Jacob walked away and sat quietly on the same stool he always sat on. He held his head in his hands, then stared out the kitchen window, holding back his tears. Nothing was said as Mama mixed and poured pancake batter into the skillet. Jacob knew his mother was waiting for an apology, but he couldn't speak to her. Mama uh, stumbled over her words. I, I know it's hard on you, son, but you're, you're gonna, but we're gonna go through this, these hard times. Uh, we are kind of going through some hard times, but Jacob broke out in rage. I hate being black. I hate it. A chill ran down Mama's back as if her spine were a huge icicle. Black being black ain't got nothing to do with it, son. Everything black is bad, bad, Jacob repeated, repeated words he'd heard others say. Have you ever heard of the black house? No, but there's a white house. A white tornado cl uh, cleans your sink. A black one destroys your house. And how about fairy tales? It's the white knight who wins and the black one who loses. Good magic is white. Black magic is bad. That's nonsense, Jacob, Mama answered. Those are just tired old words I've been hearing since I was a girl. So he had all this, all these conceptions about black being bad. Nothing good came of anything that was black. So he felt, he, since he was black, he didn't like that. So here something broke the, the bitterness. Let's see what happens. Pee-wee tugged on his mama's skirt. Mama, not now, Pee-wee, Mama said, staring sadly at her son. Pee-wee tried again. Mama, shh, Mama said. But as she turned around, she noticed smoke rising from the pan. She looked inside and started to laugh. Pee-wee laughed too. What's so funny, Jacob asked. That is, she said, the man in the pan. There's no man in there, Jacob said, just a black pancake. Child, you have no imagination. Still laughing, Mama bus bustled about the kitchen until her masterpiece was complete. She gave the pancake man two Cheerios for eyes and a sausage for a mouth. Jacob tried to hold back a smile, but could not. He laughed so hard he felt ready to burst. Mama tickled Jacob, then both boys tickled her back and they all found themselves on the kitchen floor. Mama doubled over, Jacob and Pee Wee kicking their feet in the air. Do you think our pancake man, man is happy being black? Jacob asked. Why, of course, said Mama. Happy ain't got no color. Then Jacob's laughter dissolved as quickly as it, it had come. This is dumb, he said as he grabbed his coat and walked out the door. 
so he was still back in his thinking about black being bad so he goes outside and it's wintry and cold and there's snow the morning air was crispy cool patches of white snow wink bright between puddles of gray foot worth foot worn slush horns honked at children who aimed their snowballs at buses and trucks jacob stepped out into the battle two snow snowballs exploded on either side of him he jumped out into the battlefield dodged a few missiles and retreated out back where he could sit on the cellar door and be alone but in no but it was no use peewee was already on his trail what do you want jacob asked i just want to play with my big brother said peewee let's build a snowman we can't build a snowman jacob snapped just look at that snow it's watery and black from all the people trampling on it then we'll make a black snowman said peewee a black snowman jacob sighed just what i've always wanted so peewee no matter how jacob tried to get away from him was always there have you ever had a little brother or sister that followed you all over and would, wouldn't give you some alone time well peewee was one of those kids jacob watched as peewee packed the snow with his small hands at that rate you're go you're going you won't be done till spring jacob said with jacob's help the work went quickly the harder jacob worked the better he felt the black snowman sure could use some dressing up he suggested it was peewee's job to pick through the trash to find a wardrobe still wool for his hair buttons for his eyes and a funny old hat peewee looked at the snowman proudly but jacob jacob had a more critical eye he knew it wasn't quite done it needed something that's how he looked at it and so he said something was was missing like what what's missing peewee asked like it's cold out here find him something to wear on his shoulders peewee returned to the trash where a colorful cloth caught his eye look at this peewee said as he held out the cloth for his brother to see let me see where is it well what do you think he's gonna find i'm gonna show you look at what he found do you remember that cloth from generations back? Do you remember the storyteller? <sighs> Do you think it's the same kente from long ago that came all the way from Africa? Let's find out. Still pretty colorful, even though it's been frayed, kind of torn up. And look where they put it around the snowman's shoulders. Nah, Jacob scowled. Don't use that. It doesn't go with the rest of him. Find something else. Well, I like it, Pee-wee said, and I'm going to use it. Pee-wee carefully wrapped the cloth around the snowman's lumpy body. Though old and torn, the cloth began to come alive again with powers passed down through many generations. Pee-wee had discovered the magic kente. Now he's perfect, Pee-wee said. Jacob looked at the sooty snowman in his tattered hat and shawl. He felt sad and angry at the same time. So he looked at the, at the black snowman full of soot, all that ash from the black dirt, and, and his tattered or torn up shawl or kente. Now he's perfect, said uh, Pee-wee once more. A black snowman, Jacob said, Jacob said, is that ugly? He didn't think it was so cool like Pee-wee did. Look at his, his expression. Not too impressed, but Pee-wee is delighted. Who are you calling ugly? The boys looked around but saw no one. Who said that? Jacob asked. I did. Over here. Look at it's our snowman, Pee-wee said, skipping with delight. Our snowman can talk. Jacob stared suspiciously. The small snowman picked up Pee-wee and lifted him high. Well, look here, said the snowman. 
a little one who still believes. The snowman put Pee Wee down again and they danced. We have to go, said Jacob. The snowman led his partner toward Jacob. But you haven't danced yet, said the snowman. Why, it's downright impolite not to dance with a new friend. So that magic is working, it's still alive. But Jacob is not so convinced. And look what the snowman does. Let's read on. You're no friend of mine, Jacob said. The snowman walked around Jacob. He pressed his glove to Jacob's forehead and squinted his eyes in concentration. So he went, he squinted his eyes. The snowman's color changed from gray to pink to red, yellow, blue, and finally a solid black. See all the colors on his face. Wonder what's happening there. It was as if the colors in space had painted themselves onto his body. He opened his eyes wide as if he had made a sudden discovery. Guess what he felt as he touched Jacob. So black is bad, huh? Said the snowman. That's right, Jacob spoke up. What is more important in a book? The white pages? The black words or the message the book holds, asked the snowman. So he is asking him a very important question to make Jacob think. But Jacob doesn't quite get it. He says, huh? The heavens are black and the universe is held on it, said the snowman. Shall we call the earth bad because it is cradled or it's held in blackness? Jacob didn't know what to say. The snowman continued. Have you sat in the table of your forefathers? Have you accepted the shield of courage you have pa they have passed on to you? Jacob hesitated. He didn't know what this crazy snowman was talking about. So this snowman has the wisdom of the storyteller. He knows a lot. And here are the boys and there is the snowman. When, they, when the boys have to go, let's see what he says. Jacob Peewee. Mama called from the window. Oh, brother, it's Mama. Pee-wee spoke up, then yelled back, Coming, Ma! The snowman broke the spell. We will meet again, Jacob. My work with you has just begun. The boys scooted down the alley into the street. In the hallway, they agreed not to tell their mother or anyone else about what had happened. But the snowman will be around because he said he was not done with Jacob. He was going to do something with him or about how he was feeling. What do you think that's going to be? Can you predict? Do you think it made an impact on Jacob? Look at him at night. Still can't go to sleep thinking about what happened. Let's read on. Neither curtain, night's curtain fell upon the day. The room was dark except for the street light that showed dimly through the window. So what do you think of our snowman, Pee-wee uh, said. It's pretty neat, huh? What's so neat about an ugly black snowman, Jacob asked. He's no ordinary snowman, said Pee-wee. I don't want to talk about him, said Jacob. But he's alive, said Pee-wee. Our snowman is uh, alive. And here they are. Still, Pee-wee goes to sleep, but Jacob still cannot fall asleep. Just in your imagination, Jacob lied. Now go to sleep and leave me alone. Then let's talk about Christmas, Pee-wee said. I want to get Mama something really special this year. Jacob became angry. Don't you understand anything? We don't have any money. But I have a plan. We can collect empty bottle cans and turn them into, in for a refund money. Pee-wee explained, if we collect a whole lot, we can buy Mama a special present. But we can buy her, we can buy her that perfume she likes. What do you think, huh, Jacob? Where are you going to get all those cans and bottles, Pee-wee? You'll have to walk half the day to find them. Well, have you ever been so broke to where you had to go collect cans to sell to get what you needed. 
Well, I'm going to make a connection. I did. When we first came to Colorado and we didn't have work because it was winter and my job with the Migrant Colorado School, Migrant School didn't come through, my daughter needed to go, uh, needed a swimming suit to go swimming with a Migrant um, Preschool. So I had no money. So we went to the park that was close to our little town in Henderson and we went to the Adams Fairgrounds. And I collected with my husband, we collected cans, sold them, collected $10, and I bought her her swimsuit. So I have done that myself. So you try anything for your children. And Jacob, Pee Wee was, was willing to do that for his mama. But when uh, Jacob heard that idea about going into that old, old building, he said, oh, no. I've seen cans all over the old building across the street. That's where a lot of people throw their stuff. That's what Pee Wee told his older brother. But Jacob said, no way, don't you go near that place. That building is falling to pieces and mama will be angry. Anyway, I ain't looking through nobody's garbage. So he had a little bit of pride there. He was not willing to do any of that. Jacob could tell that Pee Wee was sleeping. But Jacob's mind was too crowded with confusing thoughts to fall asleep just yet. Then Jacob heard a voice. What do you think is that voice calling to him? It said, Arise, great warrior, arise. Uh, give me a second, please, and see who that is. Let me tell my brother. I'm... Hey, Jaime. Estoy grabando, te hablo ahorita, okay? I love you. Bye. I'm sorry. I didn't uh, lower the volume, but um, I'll get back to him. So at Jacob's, as Jacob approached the window, a blue-white light rose from the valley below. The snowman was standing with his hands up toward the sky. He waved at the broken wall of the building, at the broken wall of the building, and a single brick dislodged and fell. On its way down, the brick changed its shape and standing in the alley was an African warrior. Then the snowman threw a trash can lid high into the air. As it spun, into, it turned into a majestic black queen. Jacob put his coat over his pajamas and ran outside. Look at Jacob looking out the window and look at what is forming outside as the snowman throws these objects. Warriors from his native land, Africa. I think he is working with him. You can't see this illustration very well because it's dark because it's supposed to be night. But let me tell you. The snowman stepped upon a mound of snow, then waved his arm and asked, Have you studied with the scholars of Timbuktu? Suddenly a lump, a, a small dump of snow transformed into a giant figure. Or written with a horseman of Bornu? With just a wave of his arm, a horse and a rider rose out of the snow. Have you danced with the Zulu, wrestled with the Nuba, hunted with the Bim Bini? Have you heard the stories of the Ashanti, the poems of Tureg, the prayers of Sande? Who are these people? Jacob asked. They are people like you, the snowman replied. These are strong, brave Africans from whom you descend. Black people who stand, who should make you proud of your great heritage. I am not like them, Jacob said. I am not a warrior. I am just a boy. Jacob ran back upstairs and hid under his blanket. But he could not fall asleep for a long, long time. So the, the African snowman brought all these ancestors back so that Jacob could could learn about them because he came from this strong heritage. Just like I tell, I used to tell my students, and I still do when I do presentations, that we come from the Maya and the Aztec. Amazing people, uh, intelligent beyond their, their time, who were great uh, farmers that invented the chinampas. They were great astrologers that predicted the seasons and knew when ceremonies were and when to plant, when it was appropriate for war, and all of those special things. Uh, they were great mathematicians, invented the concept of zero. They, were, uh, they invented a calendar that's more accurate than our very own. 
They had uh, a huge society, which they maintain with their own uh, produce, their own uh, gardens, and they never wasted or mistreated the land. They took care of everything. They did not litter. They were really amazing people. And as you can see in my room, I have the Aztec, the Maya, all of my culture in my office. Why? Because I am proud of wh whom, who I come from, so I don't have to feel angry, but use that pride and my ancestor knowledge to feel proud of where I come from so that I can be as strong as I can be and find my future, which I did. So uh, this is also something that we can connect with and relate to with the Ashanti tribe or any other culture that comes from, from amazing ancestors that worked hard and were amazing uh, people. Even if uh, the Europeans saw them as, um, as savages that knew nothing, they knew plenty. They could, the, the Maya were amazing writers that left their writing on the stones uh, if you go to Mexico and you see all uh, the pyramids, they were amazing builders. They were just amazing people that did a lot of things. They were not perfect, of course, but they were very intelligent. And um, we could have learned so much from these people if we had not destroyed their culture. I don't think we'd be in the place we are today if we learned from these, these past um, wise people and, and some of their ways. Okay, so then the next day, here's Pee Wee. That, that was the night before. The next day, Pee Wee, Jacob woke to see Pee Wee at his bedside with a shopping bag in his hand. Is this your, ch this is your last chance, Pee Wee said. Are you coming or not? Jacob rolled over, turning his back toward Pee Wee. Go hunt garbage by yourself, said Jacob, and he pretended to go back to sleep until his brother left the room. After Jacob dressed, he poked through the kitchen stove to see what Mama was cooking for Sunday dinner. I'm making your favorite, said Mama. Mama was always trying to make things better. Pee Wee was right. She deserved something special for Christmas. I'm going out for a while, said Jacob. He kind of changed his mind because even though he was mad and had uh, spoken back to Mama, he loved her and realized that she deserves something. Here's another illustration, kind of in the dark, but they are other images of uh, past warriors. Jacob looked up and down the block, but Pee Wee was nowhere in sight. Then, shaboom, an explosion. Jacob hit the ground and hit his head. When he looked up, he saw smoke and fire coming from the abandoned building across the street. And guess who was there? The black snowman appeared at his side. Pee-wee is in the building, he said. The snowman ran into the burning building with Jacob close behind. Great licking flames devoured everything they touched. Wooden beams collapsed as a fire consumed their last bits of moisture. The air was filled with smoke smoke that seemed to form the shapes of the great Africans, giving Jacob courage and leading him to his brother. So as all the wood was collapsing, falling down, and uh, tearing down and burning every piece of wood, all these figures appeared to, J to uh, Jacob. Jacob pressed himself into the coolness of the snowman's body. The snowman covered himself and the boy with a kente. Beneath this magical cloth, they were saved from the smoke and flames. So there is this kente performing its magic, protecting them from the fire and the smoke. So here they were huddled under the kente. But do you see the snowman hand? The snowman is no longer under the kente. What do you think is happening? Let's read on. In a room on the second floor, they found Pee Wee huddled in a corner, sobbing between coughs, sitting next to the shopping bag that was half filled with bottles and cans. As Jacob hugged his brother, 
he noticed a trail of water from the snowman uh, which he was leaving behind the snowman's feet had melted away as jake um restore restore the snowman said as the snow returned to his feet the snowman removed the kente from his own shoulders and wrapped the two boys in its protective magic under the safety of the kente there was only room for two so the snowman was saving the boys and was not going to be protected himself the snowman melted rapidly his feet and legs had turned to slush he walked awkwardly bumping into burning beings and stumbling over fallen debris his melting arms felt for the doorway and found Jacob's outstretched hand. Snowman, Jacob whispered. So they were there, Jacob and Pee were coming out, but not the snowman. And you see, the fire is still burning wildly. The boys are out safe under the kente, wrapped around the magic of their African ancestors' magic and strength. Restore, restore, the snowman repeated, but was weakening. Jacob, get your brother out, Jacob. Believe, Jacob, believe in yourself. Gather up your courage. Fight, Jacob, fight off those flames of all those bad feelings you carry inside. Believe in your strength. Believe in your love for your brother. Believe you can save Pee-wee, and you will. Almost overcome with tears, Jacob said softly. I believe, snowman, I believe. Restore, said the snowman once again. Jacob wrapped the cloth even more tightly around himself and his brother and fought smoke and flames all the way down the stairs. Once again, the Africans appeared and showed Jacob the way. When the boys reached the bottom, they turned around. The snowman was gone, leaving only a puddle of water that soon evaporated in the extreme heat. So restore means to rebuild, to rebuild. And so the snowman wanted Jacob to rebuild himself, to be a new person that believed and was proud of who he was. Where do you think he is? Pee Wee asked as they looked behind of the collapsing building. On the bottom of the steps, Jacob noticed steel wool, buttons, and a funny old hat. I think he's gone, Jacob said. As the boys left the burning building, they saw their mother break through the crowd. Jacob felt smothered in hugs and kisses. He decided that it was a good feeling. Jacob closed his eyes and took a long, deep breath. He suddenly felt lucky to have peewee and mama he felt glad to be alive and he felt good about himself restored yes my can said peewee i forgot my cans for mama's present hush said jacob we'll look for some cans tomorrow tomorrow we'll go together a whole new added attitude with jacob i think he was restored he was built anew what happened to the kente? Let's find out. Look at that. It took several hours for the fire department to put out the blaze. Finally, it was all over. On his way back to the truck, one of the firemen noticed a colorful cloth hovering over the snow. Thinking his daughter could use the cloth to make a dress for her doll, he picked it up and put it in his pocket. Do you think this kente is going to do magic with that little girl in her life? I believe so. The magic kente, the black snowman. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something <coughs> about feeling good about who you are. Um, please um, read a book in honor of uh, Black History Month. This is one of my favorites. I have lots of books for Black History Month, but I selected this one because I think we can all relate to this on how all of us, no matter what culture, sometimes we don't feel worthy 
or we don't feel proud of who we are or what we've done or where we come from. There's always redemption, always a time to rebuild ourselves, to restore our soul. So I hope you enjoyed it. I love telling this story. Um, I am going to read Snowman at Night, which is a really fun, fun um, book by Carolyn Buner, uh, pictures by Mark Buner. So this is a couple, a book published by Scholastic, one of my favorite publishing companies that I hope to publish with someday. Oh, as, as I mentioned that, I just submitted a story, Tortillas on the Go, to um, Tummy Tales, where they write stories about a recipe of food, um, that, and it also tells a story or the culture uh, with that family or that food, that recipe, and I did mine. I titled it Tortillas to Go, about Mama's taquitos that she used to make. And a lot of our parents made when we were on the go to go up north to last us, you know, most of the way, the, the, the day, the several days and nights uh, trek or trip over there, the migration, and how she would nourish us with them in the fields, for school. And so here in Colorado is the first time I heard of burritos, but I try to make taquitos in honor of my madre. So... Um, I'm hoping it will publish soon, and if it does, I'll have to share it with you, and maybe you could buy the book. I'll show you the cover of the book. It's a series of several stories. I, they had several books, and I don't know what number series this would be. This was the last one. I was there, and I was encouraged to do a story by a friend, and so I did. And so it's called... Uh, tummy tales so it, it'll have a title and other tummy tales so it has um, here's a, a, the editor that's working with me Julian's mountain miracle this is Deborah's story so it'll have mine will have a, an illustration and then it'll tell the story and then at the end it will have the recipe so I will include my tortilla recipe along with whatever filling I use for the taquitos. So, Tummy Tales. I'm hoping mine will be, I will be one of the authors mentioned um, in the cover like this. These are all the people that put a story yet there. And I'm hoping my, my name will be there uh, for the next book that they're working on. So, Tummy Tales. Um, anyway, I am going to go ahead and read you this. This is a fun book. I, re I read it once and I remember loving it. So this is called Snowmen at Night. Do you ever wonder what snowmen do at night when we fall asleep after we build them? I know some people even in Texas have built snowmen because it snowed all the way uh, down there in Dallas, in the Dallas area. And we had snow here too. This is normal for Colorado, but not so normal for Texas, especially South Texas, where my family lives in Eagle Pass. They, they, it's been cold, but I don't think they've gotten snow yet. I just hope and pray they don't get that horrible snow and conditions they had last year where they were without water and electricity for so many days, which made it really hard for a lot of people. I think some people lost electricity, so I'm hoping uh, they will be helped and get some heat in their homes because it's hard. Right here, it's not so bad because we're equipped for that. We are used to the snow, so the the city, the, the, the state is ready to handle those kinds of, of days, even though we too close schools when it's too uh, icy and too much snow and too dangerous to be out and about. So we had a day off for a snow day the other day. And it was just uh, a sheet. Uh, it was if people went out, people were sliding all over because everything turned to ice because there was a lot of, um, there was a little bit of rain and sleet and then it froze, so people were falling, um, skidding, having accidents. In the driveway, cars that were on a slope started sliding back, and people just falling on their sidewalks. It was pretty bad. So anyway, snowmen are fun. So hopefully some of you had fun and didn't have to put up with so many um, 
hard things. Okay. So here's the first illustration of a little boy rolling the snow to make the snowman. One wintry day I made a snowman, very round and tall. The next day when I saw him, he was not the same at all. So this is your typical snowman. I wonder what he's saying, that he wasn't the same at all. What could have happened the next day? I think, the little boy said, that snowman started to slide. When it gets really dark, off the lawn, he, he, went, he slid off the lawn and down the street into the park. So this is what he thinks happens. The snowman slides slide off of the yard. They gather in a circle while they wait for the others, sipping cups of ice cold cocoa made by snowman mothers. <laughs> Look at how fun. That they're out there drinking, not warm, but cold ice cocoa made by their moms to wait for the other snowmen. This is, this looks like fun. Then snowman games begin. They line up on their places, each one anxious for his turn in the snow races. So then he thinks they, they do snow racing. What an imagination. It's really cool. Sometimes they start giggling and they act like clowns. They bump each other, they, they bump into each other till they fall and they all fall down. <laughs> I don't think they can make snow angels. Oh, one of them's trying. Do you see that one? Where is it? Right here? With his little uh, twig arm making a, uh, a, a snowman angel. <laughs> they gather their snowballs. The pitcher takes his aim, and underneath the moonlit sky, they play a baseball game. Do you believe that? That they might be playing baseball while we're sleeping? <laughs> Did you notice the moon? Look at the moon. The moon is a snowman face with the carrot nose. What an imagination. Beautiful illustrations. Do you see all the balls? The snowballs? See them right here? Fun, fun, fun. And the broom is the bat. Did you see that illustration too? How creative, huh? How beautiful. No one knows how it started, but soon it's quite a sight with no men throwing snowballs in the world's best snowball fight. They also like to snowball fight. Have you ever had a snowball thrown at you? They can hurt, so be careful. But they are fun to dodge and try to get somebody. Then it's time to, for sledding. It's a wild ride down the hill. Look at that, sliding down the hill. How beautiful. With a moonlit sky. Woo, they yell. This is by far the snowman's biggest thrill. Sledding too, look at that. Oh, and tubing. I've gone tubing with my kids. It's a lot of fun. Finally, they're tucked out, and getting sleepy, so they slowly gather up their things, and one by one, they go. So once they're done with all that fun, it's time to get back home. They're just picking up their mittens, their scarves, their hats. So if a snowman's grin is crooked or he's lost a little height, you'll know he's been doing what snowmans do at night. So that's why they look different in the morning. You ever seen them be a little different than when you built him? Look, let me show you the beginning. Where is that snowman? There he is, nice, standing up straight. And then at the end of the story, 
<laughs> this is what you might find. And when you find that, you might think about what that snowman has been had been up to that night before, having all that fun. So look at that. Maybe they even get on your swings. Wee! <laughs> this is a pretty cool book. Look at the arms reaching for the full moon. Snowman at night. Fun book. I hope you enjoyed it. Parents, maybe you could buy these for your kiddos now that it's winter. It would be fun. Okay, so I am going to read The Black Snowman in Español, El Muñeco de Nieve, and then I will translate The Black Snowman the best I can because I do not have it in Spanish. But before I do that, I wanted to tell you to encourage or people to read. My daughter, uh, um, Tanya in Florida, told me about this book, Abuelita Faith by Kate Armas. I just got it in the mail. I order it through Amazon, or my daughter does. So I'm going to be reading this. I still haven't finished Angela's Ashes, which I need to do between my writing, but I also will reread The Sweetness of Water, one of the best sellers that helps me write in a different way, a more advanced way. So I use my the reading of these award-winning books. As you can see, this one has Oprah's Book Club. So it's one of the best books that was not nominated in 2020, uh, 2021. So I read it, but I like to reread it. So when I write, I can incorporate what I have learned into my writing to elevate my writing so that my writing could also be uh, one of the best selling books, hopefully someday. So I am currently looking for an agent. I just ordered Reader's Digest. I subscribe to it, which has a lot of um, agents to contact to see if they're interested in my story. I've just bought this huge writer's market and I, I haven't gotten the poet poetry poets and writers because I also have a big collection of um, writing material I mean poems about 50 poems that I want to um, publish hopefully so I'll be working on trying to publish more of the children's books and poetry while I wait to find an agent because that's a little more time consuming so anyway, I hope you are getting ready to send Valentines. I just sent some to my granddaughters in Florida. I sent some to my brothers in Texas. I did not send my Christmas present to my uh, sister-in-law in Iowa. I told her I would give her this piggy um, cookie cutter for the Mexican, um, what do you call it, ginger ginger uh piglets los marranitos so i'm going to mail this i'm trying to find a box i don't know if i'll use this one because uh it's it's not tall enough but i'm gonna send them that for valentine's and uh, write my cards i have to write them for uh, my daughters and my grandkids so i have uh lots of writing to do hopefully i'll get them done uh today so that i can do my regular um uh, classes and writing time on the weekday besides all my other chores but anyway I'm going to take a short break I thank you for watching um, I will be back a ratito regreso para leerles en español el muñeco negro de nieve negro en español espero que les haya gustado gracias por escucharme watch thank you for watching and listening I hope you enjoyed it. I hope uh, your children get to see this. And uh, maybe for um, Valentine's, you might write a poem together. Remember that poem, that little box? Uh, the little box poem that uh, says, do not open this because it's filled with love. So it's just a little box with a bow with a little poem. I might post that so you can get the idea. So maybe you might want to do it. 
I saved some, uh, what do you call it, styrofoam from a package to cut it up so that way you could use it as an idea. Maybe I'll dig that out and I'll show you and I'll upload the little um, bow, the little uh, present that is full of love that maybe your kids might want to do for a loved one or you can help, help them do one so they can give it to uh, one of their favorite Valentines. Okay, I will say uh, see you in a little bit. It is 11. I'll be back in about 10, 15 minutes. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, see you in a little bit. Thank you for watching. Nos vemos como en 15 minutos para leerles el siguiente cuento y compartir lo que compartí en español. Okay? Cuídense. Que Dios, uh, que se mantengan calientitos. Kisses, hugs, miss you, love you. Take care and curl up with a nice book. All right. See you later. <clears throat>